grace to you and peace. In God our Father, and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. There is a battle that rages inside of us all. An internal struggle. A spiritual tug of war that wreaks havoc on our hearts. It's a deep seated doubt. A lingering suspicion. An uncertainty that rises up from somewhere deep inside and declares war on our faith. And it shows itself in some cynical questions we have about the Lord's will. And some objections about what He does. And those reservations that hold us back from fully committing to the cause. And that constant fear that all of this is just a hoax. And so we try to push those feelings back. And we try to hold those thoughts down, but it doesn't always work. Sometimes we get the upper hand, but sometimes we lose ground. Sometimes we're in control, but other times it's so out of control that we're scared about where we're going to end up after everything stops spinning. <coughs> the fight is fierce. The attacks are relentless. And the number of times our faith has failed to stand the test and hold firm in the middle of the incessant assaults is dismal at best and near fatal at worst. There is a battle that rages inside of us all. But you don't want to admit it. I don't want to. We can't just tell everyone how much we struggle all the time. We can't just let everyone know that our faith is so stretched and so strained and so exhausted at certain points that we don't even know what we believe on some days. And so we keep it hidden. We keep the doubts and the questions, the objections and the reservations as deep as we can bury them so that no one else around us knows exactly how weak and unstable we really are. We say out loud that we believe, but then there are moments that we aren't quite so sure. We publicly confess that we trust in all of God's promises, but then in those dark nights when we have nothing to occupy our minds with except for our own thoughts, we start to second guess what God has guaranteed. We stand shoulder to shoulder with each other right here in this room. And we say aloud and clear without reservation that we are in full agreement with every single teaching that the Lord lays out for us in the pages of the Bible. But then when our lives are turned upside down and we are facing a difficulty or a tragedy that takes our breath away, we start to wonder if any of this was ever true in any way at any time of our lives. There is a battle that rages inside of us all. So I want to introduce you today to a man who is just like us. A man that we met in Mark chapter 9. The father of a son who struggled, who so badly wanted to believe, to trust, to embrace God's power and his love, but he just didn't know if he could do it. We should have no problem at all identifying with this man because although we have not gone through the exact same experience that he went through that day, we know the struggle. We understand the fight his faith was in when he was confronted with a reality that seemed to contradict everything that he held to be true. Listen to part of the story again. 
even though the situation is different than what you have ever gone through. The struggle is the same. The man in the crowd said, Teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. Whenever it seizes him, it throws him to the ground. He foams at the mouth, gnashes his teeth, and becomes rigid. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. A one believing generation, Jesus replied, How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring the boy to me. So they brought him. When the spirit saw Jesus, it immediately threw the boy into a convulsion. He fell to the ground and rolled around, foaming at the mouth. Jesus asked the boy's father, How long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. It is often thrown him into the fire or water to kill him. But if you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for him who believes. Immediately the boy's father exclaimed, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And there it is. There's the back. I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. And we get it. We understand why he would say that. Because we have those same kind of thoughts and situations that are far less extreme. This man's son had an evil spirit that tried to rob this boy's life on multiple occasions. And the father couldn't do anything about it. And Jesus' own disciples couldn't cast the demon out. And so there is only one option left. If you can do anything, <coughs> the boy's father begged Jesus. If you can do anything, have pity on us and help us. And Jesus' response cuts right to the heart of the matter. <coughs> if I can, Jesus says to the man, if I can, of course I can. The issue is not whether I can or not. The issue is whether you believe I can or not. Jesus didn't want to point the man to his own power to do what needed to be done. Jesus was more concerned about the health of this man's faith. And so notice what Jesus says to this man next. You would expect him to say, well, everything is possible for God. But he doesn't say that at all. He says everything is possible for him who believes. You do believe, don't you? You do trust me, don't you? You do rely on my power and my love, don't you? Anything is possible for him who I do believe. The man says, I do believe. Help me to overcome my unbelief. And so what does Jesus do? He helps him overcome his unbelief. He doesn't chastise the man for having those doubts rise up in his heart. He doesn't scold the man for his lack of faith in the Lord's power and his promises. Instead, he helps the man overcome his unbelief in the most amazing way possible. Now it is true, just moments before, Jesus does chastise the entire crowd in general, disappointed that they still didn't really believe who he was. Oh, unbelieving generation, Jesus had said. How long am I going to stay with you? How long am I going to put up with you? But he did stay with them. He did continue to put up with them. And he patiently and he gently cared for this man who was standing right in front of him, who was just about as candid with his internal struggles as about anyone else in the pages of the Bible. I do believe, but help me overcome my unbelief. And so Jesus did. And he showed that man that not only can 
he do what needs it needs to be done. He always will. He can and he will. That doesn't mean that Jesus always does what people ask him to do or want him to do or expect him to do. But Jesus can do the impossible and he always will do what is best. And he doesn't just do that for nameless characters in the pages of the Bible. He does that right now for you. When doubts rise up in your heart and start to challenge your faith in your Savior, Jesus doesn't reprimand you for being so pitiful. <laughs> Instead, he immediately goes to work, wiping away those doubts by pointing you back to his cross. Because up there on those beams of wood, there is no doubt what Jesus can do and exactly why he did it. He did the impossible. He successfully absorbed every one of your faults and every one of your imperfections and every one of your rebellious attitudes that you produced throughout your life, and then he died for it. He suffered an excruciating amount of pain, both on this earth and in hell itself, so that you would never have to worry that you would go there on your own. Because not only can Jesus do that, he already has. That doesn't mean the doubts stay away. Those lingering uncertainties start to rise up again, slowly, slyly, secretly, unconsciously. That's exactly when Jesus steps in once again and takes that opportunity to firm up your faith one more time. And this time he points you to his tomb. Because there, in the floating dust of that morning sun, there is no body. There is no need for spices and perfumes to cover up the stench because there is no death. There is only life. And a powerful, unprecedented, undeniable force of the resurrection that Jesus promises you too will one day experience. Because not only can Jesus do that, he will. You will not be condemned for a shaky faith. Instead, you will be held firmly in his hand whenever you tremble and promise eternity and heaven securely in his arms. And yet still, still, those cynical questions ran around in your head. Still, the objections roll around in your mind. Still, the reservations hold you just far enough back from God's word that they pin you down. And it's a battle. It's a spiritual civil war wreaking havoc on your heart. And even though we make progress sometimes, it never seems like we never hold the field for long. I do believe we try to convince ourselves. I do believe we cry out to our Lord. I do believe that help me to overcome my unbelief. And so the Lord does. He points you to his word. And he says, I know you. I know you believe. I am the one who worked faith in your heart through these very pages. And then he points you to your baptism. And he says, I know you believe. I am the one who gave you that gift of faith, maybe for the first time through the special combination of water and the word, or at least solidified your faith through this holy washing. And then he points you to the table. And he says, I know you believe. I am the one who re-energizes your faith. I am the one who reassures your faith. I am the one who revitalizes your faith through my own body and blood inseparably connected with the bread and wine of that special supper. I know you believe. But I also know you struggle. I know you believe. But I also know you still doubt. And I do not want you to worry. 
you were saved not because of the strength of your faith. You were saved because of the strength of the one in whom you believe. You were saved not because you were so dependable and reliable. You were saved because I am so dependable and reliable. You were saved not because of you. You were saved because of me. Your God knows exactly what you are going through on the inside every single day. Because that desperate father with the demon possessed son was not the only man in Mark chapter 9 who was just like you. Jesus was just like you. He went through the same baths and never found. He went through the same struggles that you do right now. But he always came out victorious. And so he knows exactly what to do for you at exactly the right time and exactly the right way to keep you close to him every step of the way. Until you reach your eternal home with Him forever. He can. And He will. And in the meantime, the battle rages on. As long as we are on this earth, we will always have those doubts and those questions, those objections and those reservations. They are never going to go away. But as we continue to get through these battles, as we continue to survive these fights and become more and more experienced veterans of this spiritual war, the Lord builds up our trust in Him. He solidifies our faith on the foundation of His Word so that whenever the attacks come, whenever we are surrounded by the incessant assaults that never seem to end, we know that one day that dust is going to clear and the clamor and the din of the fight is going to fade away and we will be left standing right next to our Lord just like we always have been. Because He can. And He will. like he did for his father and his son. Something that they were going to have to remember for the rest of their lives too. It was just because the Lord performed an incredible miracle for them that day. doesn't mean they never had any problems again. I'm sure they had plenty. But now, they could be that much more sure. That much more confident. That much more convinced that the Lord could and would everything that they could ever need. He had proved it once before right in front of their eyes. Why wouldn't he continue to do those things for the rest of their lives? Your Lord has proved that to you more than once. Hundreds of times. Thousands of times. That he can and he will do everything needed. And so you can be just as sure. Just as confident. Just as convinced as that man and his boy just as did. That the Lord will come through for you every single time. Will you still doubt the Lord's love on occasion? Will you still question the Lord's power from time to time? Will you still object to His promises? And and hold yourself back on those dark days and those depressing moments. Unfortunately, that is who we are. But thankfully, God still is who He is. Reliably loving. Persistently patient unquestionably powerful and unfathomably forgiving. Your God will always be who we need Him to be, especially at those times when we are not. 
So that when I would come to him again with shoulders slumped and head bowed and eyes wet and face red, and we say to him quietly, embarrassing me, I do believe, I really do believe, that help me overcome my unbelief. Your Lord looks you in the eyes. And he says without hesitation, I know. And I will.